All right, so this is how I'm gonna have it laid out right now for the time being. As you can see, this here is the box for the APU. That's where the air filters and stuff like that. It needs a couple inches there to breathe in between the box and the Zero Breeze itself. I do have, um, hopefully you can see all that. Those are the uh, two uh, pipes for the APU itself. I'm actually not going to be using those. What I've decided to do, uh, since the Zero Breeze really fits in perfectly this way, uh, and as you can see, it's it's just going to be short enough. Uh, we have the main pipe here. Uh, this is uh, what blows out the cold air. So what I'm going to be doing is, and hopefully you guys will be able to see this, but there's already some pre-cut holes here. There's an air vent here. Uh, this air vent sucks in uh, ambient temperature, room temperature air, and then it goes this way into this device here. It also sucks it in, and when I'm running heat, it goes into uh, this box right here from this side. And uh, that's my S-bar heater. I wish it were a little bit closer to the wall, but you know, it is what it is. Oh well. Um, yeah, so that's how it's gonna be. I have to, I'm gonna have to cut a couple inches off this tube because it's just too big. It's too big. But uh, you know, <laughs> it should fit perfectly right here and I should be able to glue it in place. I even have plastic glue that'll work. Now the rear end. Uh, it's looking like it's gonna have to go directly through that back wall. Right around there, I'm gonna have to poke two four inch holes. Is how it's gonna, it's, that's how it's gonna have to be. Uh, additionally, I've done a lot of cleaning and stuff like that. I've got a tremendous amount of tools. You can hear by my feet, still going through all the tools and spare parts. Uh, trying to clear up some space because, you know, I like to be prepared. Well, it turns out I was a little too over prepared this time. So yeah, I'm gonna have to throw out some stuff. But uh, that's the update so far. I will keep you guys updated when I uh, do some shopping. So what I'm gonna have to do is also, oh, I forgot to mention too. So these tubes are gonna have to be cut down to like right here. Okay, that's that's another thing I'm gonna have to do. Uh, there's just no way around it. I'm gonna have to cut it down. And then, so the shopping that I gotta do right now is I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store and try and find uh, a four inch, preferably metal vent so that the outside of the wall will be protected and the rain doesn't come in and I'll probably have to get some uh, chicken wire put it back there as well so the bugs stay out you know stuff like that um, so I'm gonna have to do some basic shopping a little bit of hardware stuff uh, I'm, I have metal plates that I can use um, another thing that I can use as well is actually I could probably reuse this so I know it sounds kind of weird but I might be able to uh, I'm definitely going to use it as a template for when I drill the holes, but I could put this like right here, give or take, uh, which would actually insulate the back wall, which will keep a lot of the noise out. It'll keep the heat out because once I put the hole through there, you know, heat's going to get in. So that'll help insulate it from heat and stuff like that. And if I need to shave it down a little bit, I can shave it down and re-glue it however I need to. Um, it's just, it's just a uh, light foam. So I can... I can actually insulate part of the back of the wall. Uh, additionally, I've got the thinner one here that I can use as well. And again, I can chop it up. I could chop any of them up and re-glue them back together the way I need to to insulate whatever part of the wall that I poke through, uh, which will keep the sound down. And since it's going to be so incredibly short, the tubes, uh, it means that there's going to be less sound coming through that back of the wall as well. So this might actually work quite quite nicely, if I'm being honest with you. And uh, insulating the tubes, these tubes, uh, by putting the foam around them, will uh, actually hopefully make it a little bit more efficient. Because when it's blowing out heat through the back, um, that heat actually has a chance to get into the whole rest of the cab or at this bottom bunk area. So that little bit of foam around it should make it a whole lot better and I won't have to wrap it or anything like that. Because uh, that was my idea was that I'm gonna I was gonna grab some blankets like uh, blankets a thick blanket or like a really thick towel and wrap it around the tube to try and keep it a little bit quiet because the thing that I noticed when I was using it uh, it just in the window is that when I cracked the window open it was definitely making a very audible sound 
uh, a lot, and not, not that the unit itself was making any sound, the unit itself is quite quiet. It was all the sound from the outside was coming in. So that was kind of a problem for me because I like it being quiet. And you know, truck stops, they're loud, I get it, that's just part of the job, I'm not complaining about that, but if I can make an improvement, then I'm going to. So by just putting a little bit of foam around there, it's gonna keep it nice and quiet. Um, that way less sound gets in. Uh, I'm not really worried about the light getting in, but yeah, light was getting in. These tubes are partially transparent. Um, once you stretch them out, the light shines straight through them. Uh, but yeah, there's also the, uh, I gotta figure out exactly where I'm gonna put the batteries, which are currently charging, so I can't really move them, which will probably go on this side of the unit over here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, starting, to, starting to come together, guys, when I'm doing my day off. But anyways, I'm going to go to the hardware store now, and I'll give you guys an update once I buy some parts and probably change this hat because, yeah, I'm not walking to the hardware store with a reflective hat with lights on it. Although, you know, it's you know, the hardware store. I don't think anybody would care. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's just it right there. And then, uh, of course, you could probably see all the, uh, the fluids, the spare fluids that I have in the corner. I've got, you know, some Milwaukee tools. I've got more Milwaukee tools, I have a something else there, you know, just a bunch of random stuff. Uh, and then I have an old catwalk that's probably going to get thrown out. I was hoping to reuse it, probably just going to throw it out, or scrap it, whatever. I don't care. So if anybody needs to use catwalk, let me know, because I got one. Got a spare one, it's been sitting here for years. Uh, I installed a battery box on the where the catwalk used to be, so this thing's just been along for the ride ever since. Uh, but I might be able to reuse it as part of a structural thing. I don't know. We'll see. I don't feel like this is pretty reinforced metal, though. I mean, it's aluminum, but it's it's hard. So I'm probably not going to chop it up. It's probably not worth it. But if I need to build a structure out of it, I will. If not, I'll just sell it or throw it out. But yeah, so that's the update so far. And uh, that's also what the bottom of a bunk looks like for a truck. See, I got some uh, lots of the tools that I grab uh, on a regular basis I put over there. Uh, but I also threw a lot of the spare scrap stuff um, that was just under the bunk. Put it all over there. That way I can find it and use it. That way I don't have to keep buying it. Like I had like, I've got like a bunch of hose clamps. I keep buying hose clamps. I forget to put them on because I managed to fix the old ones or I don't know. I lose them because I throw them under the bunk and then I, you know, then I have to go out and buy another hose clamp. So, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so it's good that I was able to rearrange all this. You know, I got my circular saw there. Uh, that's a very, very big drill here very big drill it's a big old uh corded one inch but then i also have lots of other tools here as well you know i like tools but yep yeah, i'll give you guys another update once i buy some parts at home depot all right so these are the parts that i got here one small mixing tray for i don't know less than a dollar i got two of these black four inch dryer vents they do have the chicken mesh on the inside, so it should work pretty nicely. They're made out of, I don't know, just like a real thin, cheap aluminum. That'll be fine. Got some four and a half inch um, hose clamps. Got some things to poke the hole, which is pretty cool. So this here is the bit, and then it comes with these really wide, well, it didn't come with it, but I bought them. It's actually slightly larger than four inches. These are, let me double check the size, yep. Four and one eighth is actually almost the perfect diameter for this here. So it actually has to be a little bit bigger than four inches. That's fine. The hole does. The hole. Um, then I also got these uh, in line. <clears throat> Since these are going to be mounted pretty much, uh, probably going to be mounted upside down. I got these in line uh, dryer bathroom venting. So as you can see the picture, how it shows that uh, when it's mounted on the wall, they're closed. So if I mount it correctly, the back it'll stop the back pressure from coming in the truck or in the wrong direction. So that's actually kind of important. Um, and uh, yeah, an extra piece of metal here so that I can put it on the inside to reinforce the wall a little bit. It's pretty thin, but should get the job done. Last but not least, I got some silicone. Oh, here it is. Oh, I got some screws. Uh, those are just some self-tappers. Not the best, but self-tappers should work. And some Loctite. Pretty pretty straightforward for an entire price of... I'm not going to show you the receipt because it's probably got my credit card information on there. Uh, $262.90 after tax. 
yeah, uh, not bad. I mean, still incredibly expensive, but it is what it is, guys. Uh, all this so that I can just run off of battery power. Yay. So as you, uh, you know, I showed you guys earlier, I have a very specific setup that I'm going to be doing either through the floor or through the wall. Honestly, when I was looking at it uh, before I left for the hardware store, through the floor is going to be the best option. Um, the APU actually already sends all of its vent hoses through the floor as is, uh, but it's a split system, which means that I'm just running coolant lines and electrical lines inside the um, inside the truck itself. Uh, inside the truck itself, uh, it's not running a four. In it's not a four-inch hole. Let's put it that way. It's also siliconed up, which I, um, shouldn't be a problem because I've got some Loctite. But I also have some additional. Um, foam inside of the truck as well that it's, it's, apparently it was just sitting there for a while so it shouldn't be a problem give you guys uh, another update in a few alrighty so lots of work I uh, don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this because it's kind of dark but uh I put some uh, dryer vents 4 inch dryer vents on the bottom of my truck which uh, I'll have to spring load the, uh, I'll have to spring load the uh, little lids that are on the inside there. The ones that I was talking about, I use the Loctite to uh, get it in there. It's, I literally just did it, so it's not set yet. Uh, tell you what, it's uh, very, very stressful to uh, drill out these, uh, <laughs> drill out some holes. Actually, these aren't even the holes from the truck. Hold on. Yeah bring it in the light here so you guys can see yeah that's the that's the was the bottom of my truck <laughs> talk about stressful yeah um that's the insulation from the uh i don't know the flooring uh that's where we're at so far now i gotta go inside the cab and uh try and pull it up tight and uh make sure that it doesn't slide down for the night yay progress all this is probably gonna rain in like an hour or two. Uh, tell you what, it's a lot of work. It's actually kind of hard to drill up there with a four and something something quarter. It's a little bit bigger than four inches. But, uh, yeah, I just used uh, this uh, Milwaukee M12. Did have my M18, but I didn't need it. Would have been a little bit easier probably it's just heavier when you're trying to drill at such an awkward angle on top of the fuel tank so yeah that's a uh, progress so far so i'll go inside and i'll show you guys the work we got to do inside all right so now we're back inside you can see where the uh, tops of those dryer vents are at Take my head off and shine it down there. Yeah, so you can see it's got the chicken wire. Um, another piece of the floor that wound up somehow not falling through. So yeah, the idea here is going to be to uh, well push the floor down and then I have to pull these things up real nice and tight, as tight as I can get them up. And uh, hopefully um, it'll hold for the night. I'll put some more silicon glue uh, on the top side as well. I don't want to necessarily silicon the uh, rug itself though, so I gotta be careful not to do that, otherwise this rug's never coming out. It's not really a rug, it's just flooring from the Cascadia. It's nothing, nothing too fancy. It's just whatever. But uh, yeah, and then these hoses are going to go on there. Um, but I can't do it until the silicon's dry, otherwise it'll probably mess it up stretch pretty far and then it'll go like that and then it'll go on the back of the zero breeze and then the front of the zero breeze will go in there in one of those vent holes which is pretty cool and uh, yeah then I have to do this tube here this is the drainage tube uh, there and then uh, the other piece that I have to connect on is gonna be this here oops so uh, it's just a, a pressure release valve, so that way the uh, air can't blow back the wrong way into the zero breeze. And it should hopefully uh, keep some of the water and stuff like that out. The problem is this only works vertically, so I'm going to have to actually 
uh, cut the tubes. I'll have to cut the tubes somewhere in a vertical position and then stick this on there. It should fit uh, with minor modifications. It's not that I've got the silicone, that stuff. Once it's on, it's, it's as strong as concrete. So it should be all right. That's where we're at right now. Okay, so I just put the Loctite all around the edges, as you can see. Um, and I also put four screws in each vent to try and secure it and hold it tight. So I'm hoping that will be good enough to hold it in tight so that the Loctite in between the vents and the truck will... Um, We'll seal properly. That way I can start working on the uh, connecting everything else on the inside. So this should hold it nice and tight. I think we'll be all right now. Alrighty, so got the batteries hooked up to the Zero Breeze. And uh, I just have the hoses directly hooked up over there. I still have to put some hose clamps on it. As you can see what that looks like. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're bolted in there, or I use uh, self-tappers to be honest. Uh, I think the self-tappers will hold, and uh, I'll have to get under there and push them up just to make sure, but the self-tappers are holding it. And then I got the, uh, the hose coming in, and it, uh, it comes out through that vent right there. And uh, now I'm just going to uh, turn on the batteries. Hold on, Let's see if I could do this. It's a little bit awkward if you haven't noticed. This space inside a semi is actually kind of tight. It goes, first battery's on. And now we're gonna turn on the second battery. Second battery is on. They're not fully charged, but that's okay. We'll turn on the unit, put on the slowest setting, the lowest setting. Now the weird part is, it's got this light built in. I don't know why I'd want that, but whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's blowing air. So the unit sucks in air from here, blows it up to the top, and then obviously does the same thing for the rear because this is an actual air conditioning unit. And, uh, yeah, it's working. It's definitely working. Whew. It's been a long day trying to hook this up. I've got to find in uh, all the mess since I've got everything from the bunk behind me. I've got to find the uh, charger, which is right, right. Got it here in my hand. Whoop! Shouldn't have pulled on it too hard. Whew. So this is the DC to DC charger. It's gonna get directly hooked up to the. I'm gonna have to spin this around here. Directly hooked up right here. To the lower plug this is my 20 amp one which should, should quote unquote be more than enough to power this um, and I've got a special extension for that as well but uh, for now I'm just gonna sneak it in the vent and I'm not gonna worry about that tonight because honestly I'm just too tired and uh, yeah oh I can feel the cold air already the cool part is if I this is not connected yet and uh, I do apologize to hear a whole bunch of noise. It's probably from the, the air coming off of it. It's really nice. But yeah, it's blowing out 64 degree air, so it is working. And uh, please excuse my hair is a bit of a mess. But uh, yeah, it's taken me pretty much all day to do this. So the hardest part was just drilling those holes. And I tried to put that sheet of metal underneath the uh, underneath the mat there, but uh, that just didn't happen. I, <laughs> drill the holes in the wrong spot and just wasn't gonna fit so oh well it is what it is I'll probably put the foam there cut the foam up to different pieces to get that a little bit tighter like I want it to be that's a project for another day but right now she's working she's blowing out air and again let's see what we're at 63 degrees yeah it'll go down to like the I don't know 50s or so but uh, it's working. Everything's working. This the shape of the unit's not ideal, to be honest with you. Um, it's really not. I wish. I, I get it. It's they're, they're trying to design it for multiple different things. For a semi, it'd be better if this t 
tube were reversed, actually on the bottom, and then the vent on the top. That way I could match the vent on the bottom there. But like every single vehicle is going to be different. It is what it is. Uh, the APU, you know, it just it goes into that cabinet, which then goes up here, which then goes, blows out the top over there. And, you know, it's specifically designed for the truck. And uh, this was not necessarily specifically designed for a truck, but it works. And it's literally running off of these two batteries right now. So, yay. I'm just going to button everything up and throw everything underneath the bunk. Or it gets thrown out if I don't need it anymore. And be done for the night. Okay. So the last update for tonight is that I've got the vent tube, uh, drain tube installed. Uh, funny story, I was actually going to put the, uh, the big tubes in that spot, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to happen. So now I've got the small vent tube since I had already poked a, poked a hole there and I just got to silicone it up. That's it. I mean, it's done. I've got the Zero Breeze in car mode. I'll be lifting up the front end a little bit uh, just in case if I get on an angle or something like that. Uh, currently idling the truck because my APU decided to stop working in the middle of all this. Yeah, so it's a good thing I got the Zero Breeze now. Yay, this is gonna be a while before I can get that fixed. Uh, but yeah, she's pretty much installed. All I have to do is just uh, hardwire it. Uh, the electric on the back like I, t I was talking about earlier and the little vent tube just gotta get silicone and uh, probably that's gonna be a silicone and then I gotta put the uh, the thingies in the middle which I can't even find anymore I don't know where they went but uh, it's just to uh, stop the back pressure uh, from flowing in the inlet so the cool part is now that it's been running for a minute if I touch this hose here it's just normal outside air temperature if I touch this one here not down the bottom it's actually a bit warmer so I can there's a notable difference between the two so that's pretty cool it's working it's in car mode again uh, the charger for it is sitting right there it's kind of chilling on top of my bunk heater so I can't I probably can't keep it there permanently um, but yeah I mean it's working it's got just enough space to breathe there so it is exposed bottom half is kind of up against the bunk heater so yeah, I might scoot it back just a little bit. Uh, I had to move it over slightly because I cut the vent tube a little too short. Yikes. Uh, so yeah, but also it also needs space uh, in the front there for the APU as well, and that's the air filter for the APU. So that's okay that I had to move it over a bit. Uh, not a problem. And then uh, I've got to, uh, this is just kind of sitting there, so professional YouTuber. Um, it, it's just sitting there, so I'll probably have to secure that doesn't really have anything to secure it to. Uh, just another thing I gotta work on. And uh, just gotta get all the tools back in there so that I can get to bed tonight. That's about it for tonight. And, uh, you know, I'll keep filming this so that uh, y'all can see the rest of it and just mash it all up into one video. But, uh, yeah, it's it's working. Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> it's definitely worth it.